So a lot of medications, both prescription and ones found over the counter, can have some weird side effects. In fact, many of them can even cause your vision and your eyes to have problems too. And that's why I wanted to make today's video, not just because it's important for doctors to know about these different medications and their side effects, but because I think it's interesting and I think it can help a lot of people too. Like if you happen to take some cold medication or some flu meds and all of a sudden your eyes are red, they're painful, and your vision is going blurry, it might be important to know what could be going on and when to call your doctor. So here are my top 10 common medications that you didn't know affects the eyes. Number one are allergy medications, specifically anything that has the active ingredient difendramine in it. This is commonly sold under the brand name Benadryl. Now allergy medications, they work as antihistamines, some anticholinergics, and often have some sedative effects, but these are well known to dry out the body and consequently also dry eye issues. And if you're somebody who already has allergies, right, your eyes itch, then you add dryness on top of that, that's where two plus two equals 10. You can have some pretty severe symptoms. So if you take these medications, just be aware that you may need to use more rewetting drops for the eyes, but also there is some research showing that switching to something like loratadine uh, or some other kind of non-drowsy formulation, you may not have as severe dryness issues. Now one sort of just bonus medication I'll throw in here is one called Flonase or an active ingredient called Fluticasone, which is a synthetic corticosteroid nasal spray. And if you ever look on the, the back label of these types of medications, they'll sometimes say warning uh, may increase your risk for cataracts or glaucoma which is a well-known side effect of many types of steroid medications. They are known to increase the risk of cataracts and potentially increasing the eye pressure leading to glaucoma. However, there was a recent meta-analysis looking specifically at Flonase and found that uh, they carry a very low risk of developing cataracts or glaucoma, but I still think it's pertinent to know this. If you're somebody who has glaucoma or is at risk of it, make sure you let your doctor know that you're using these types of medications. Just because then your doctor may be able to double check your eye pressure and just be extra sure there's no issues. Number two is that of the cold and flu medications. Now many over-the-counter nasal decongestants and even some flu remedies contain ingredients such as phenylephrine or pseudofendramine. In fact, in the eye clinic, we also have eye drop forms of phenylephrine as they help dilate your pupils during a dilated eye exam. And for some people, if they take this flu medication, it can cause their pupils to dilate and get pretty big sometimes. The concern is that dilating the pupil can sometimes trigger what is called an angle closure attack. This is where the eye pressure starts to peak and get really high all of a sudden. You see, inside the eye, there is a fluid that's generated called the aqueous humor. And this fluid has to drain out of the eye through a structure we call the angle. And that is a structure formed by the iris, the colored part of the eye, and the clear window part of the eye called the cornea. And sometimes when you dilate the eye, that angle where the fluid is supposed to drain out of can close up and then the fluid can't go anywhere. So the eye pressure just keeps going up and up. And with high levels of eye pressure, this can end up pushing on the nerve in the back of the eye, causing death of that nerve, which we refer to as angle closure glaucoma. An issue is that people generally do not feel pressure inside of the eye. Instead, you have other symptoms. The eyes become red, they become kind of painful or uncomfortable, you can get a bad headache, and your vision often gets pretty blurry and you start seeing glare and halos around lights and things. Thankfully, this doesn't happen too often, but people who are more at risk of this happening uh, are people who have farsightedness or a very small eyeball. Usually these people have to wear glasses full time to see far away and up close for their farsightedness. Also people who are generally older of age and even women are just more likely to have this issue. But long story short, if you happen to take any medications and suddenly your eyes are red, painful, your vision starts changing, definitely call your eye doctor. And thankfully this doesn't happen too often, but on occasion I will have somebody who uh, takes like a flu or nighttime medication and then they accidentally get some on their fingers, they rub their eye, and a few hours later suddenly one pupil is super huge and dilated and they come into the eye clinic because they think they're having a stroke. And if you ever do have one pupil that gets really dilated, still a really good idea to have a doctor check on it, but occasionally it's because people got flu medication on their finger and rubbed their eyes. 
Number three is that of ADHD medications. This includes things like Ritalin, Adderall, Vyvanse, methylphenidate, or anything that is a, an amphetamine of some kind. These can affect your eyes and vision. A lot of people who come into the eye clinic on these types of medications will often tell me that their vision fluctuates. They have a hard time seeing clearly one moment and then the next, or it seems like they just have a hard time maintaining focus. What can happen is that these medications can cause the pupils of the eye to dilate as well. Usually not as much to cause a risk of something like angle closure, but enough that it changes your focusing ability. And I'm not talking like mental focus ability, because these people sometimes, that's why they're taking these medications, but also because of just like their visual focus, their ability to maintain and keep an image clear and single for some time. When the pupils dilate, you also lose what is called depth of field or your depth of focus, which is just a fancy way of saying that you have a very narrow area of clear focus. And a lot of times when you're trying to look at a piece of paper, or your phone up close, and then you look at something in the distance and back and forth, a lot of times we overshoot, but even more often we undershoot our area of focus. And if your pupils are dilated, then you again have a very narrow focus and it's easier to kind of undershoot where you need to look at which can sometimes result in fluctuating or blurry vision. I have some friends who take this medication in the morning and their pupils get pretty big, and then in the afternoon it starts to die down and come back to normal, and then they take their second dose and boom, their pupils are big again. So again, it can be a fluctuating ride for them. And one kind of a bonus comment here is that some studies have reported that people with an ADHD diagnosis have up to a two to three times risk of having a convergence insufficiency or a diagnosis of an eye teeming issue where they have a hard time bringing the eyes together to focus on something up close. So I think needless to say, if you're having vision problems, you have any sort of diagnosis with ADHD or you take medications for it, not a bad idea to have the eyes checked. Now, number four is that of Viagra or other similar type medications. And what's interesting is the active ingredient called sildenafil, it's sometimes referred to as the little blue pill. This has been known to cause some strange visual side effects, namely that of light sensitivity, but also color vision defects, including seeing the entire world looking like you're seeing through a blue hue. Viagra works by increasing blood flow to the penis and helping with erectile dysfunction, but it does this through shutting off an enzyme called phosphodiesterase 5, which, interestingly enough, also is somehow involved with photoreceptors in the back of the eye, oftentimes resulting in people seeing everything turn blue, lasting at least until the medication wears off. Now, medications like Viagra, they affect blood flow to different parts of the body, and they can even affect blood flow to the optic nerve in the back of the eye, sometimes stopping that blood flow, which we call having an ischemic optic neuropathy, basically having a stroke in the back of the eye. Thankfully, these sort of eye strokes don't happen very often with these medications, but they are reported and are known to have this effect. Uh, and so it's really important to not take really high doses of these medications unless a doctor specifically prescribed that for you. And again, of course, if you have any vision changes, let your doctor know. Actually, another set of popular medications are getting some heat right now, uh, as they are also associated with the risk of an eye stroke, or specifically what is called an NAION, which stands for non arteritic ischemic optic neuropathy. And those are semaglutide or GLP 1 medications, such as what's in Ozempic or Wygovi. I did do a whole video on this topic last year when that information was first coming out, but since then there have been several studies, some that are even contradictory, uh, that have come out over the last year. But even the newest study that did come out did provide further evidence that there is an association between the use of semaglutide and NION in the specific populations being prescribed it. However, they did show a smaller risk than what was previously reported. Either way, at this time, it seems pretty clear that there is a greater risk of an NION with use of these types of medications. But either way, really important that if you ever take something like this and you notice a vision change or vision loss, contact your eye doctor right away. Number six is that of heart medications, specifically that of something called amiodarone. Amiodarone is known pretty well uh, being used as an antiarrhythmic medication, but in the eye care world, it's very well known because we see it affecting the eyeball. Amiodarone classically causes a microcystic deposit on the eye called verticillate keratopathy or vortex keratopathy. It looks pretty cool and thankfully usually doesn't cause any vision changes. 
but basically occurs in almost near 100% of everybody I've ever seen taking this medication. Enough so that if I have a patient who came into the clinic and I haven't even looked at their eyes yet, but I saw on their medication list that they're taking amiodarone, I can basically just guess they're gonna have this condition. Amiodarone also happens to carry a small risk of getting an eye stroke or an ION as well. It's a well enough known in the eye care world and in the cardiology world, and even there's some cardiology publications suggesting that anybody who gets put on this medication should have a baseline or an eye exam scheduled. Again, thankfully, an eye stroke from this medication does not happen very often, but is still something that people should be aware of. Number seven is that of topiramate, which is a sulfa-based anti-epileptic medication that is often prescribed for migraine headaches. Where topiramate can cause effect on the eye is that it can cause an angle closure similar to what we talked about earlier, except it happens for a different reason. Instead of causing dilation, topiramate instead can cause lens edema and supraciliary effusion, basically a swelling of the muscle inside of the eye, which then leads to a forward movement of the lens iris diaphragm. But ultimately ends up with the same effect. Your uh, angle closes up and then your pressure inside the eye spikes. If you ever put on topiramate, usually if somebody has this sort of effect, it usually happens in the first two weeks of taking it. And thankfully, just stopping that medication, basically it reverses. The only thing is that eye doctors like myself have to know how to break that type of angle closure because angle closure from topiramate is different than how you treat it in the clinic versus people who have a pupillary block. Sometimes I like to quiz my students in the eye clinic on just that. But in case you ever take topiramate or get put on it and you start to have eye issues, let your doctor know right away. Now number eight is that of Plaquenil or hydroxychloroquine. This is often prescribed as not only an anti-malaria drug, but sometimes used for lupus and commonly for people with arthritis. This medication, when taken in high doses for a long period of time, the cumulative dose puts you at risk of a retinal toxicity, which can be pretty serious and irreversible if it ever hits that stage. Thankfully, the risk of this is only at like 1% when people have taken it consistently for about five years, but still it's pretty serious and eye doctors, we need to follow and watch for this. I've actually done a deeper dive on this medication in a previous video, so if you are taking Plaquenil for any reason for a certain amount of time, it might be worthwhile to check out that video just to know more of exactly what's going on, and I'll put a link to that video in the description. Now, number nine is actually a requested topic, and that is anti-cancer medications. A lot of anti-cancer meds, especially older ones, things like chemotherapy agents, they're well known to potentially cause hemorrhaging to the retina in the back of the eye. So as eye doctors, we're always checking for that. There's even some newer medications that are known to cause swelling of the cornea. And usually oncology will uh, kind of refer to us to start pre-prescribing and treating with steroid medications before they initiate any therapies that cause that corneal swelling. But one anti-cancer medication that is pretty well known to cause issues with the eyes is one called tamoxifen. Tamoxifen is a medication mainly used for the treatment of breast cancer, and about 12% of cases can develop a crystalline deposit inside the back of the eye that we call crystalline retinopathy. And unfortunately, if people develop this, it can cause permanent changes to their eyes and their vision, and it usually does not reverse, even with discontinuation of the medication. So for anybody who's on that medication, it's important to continually be following up with your eye doctors every year or sooner if they recommend you do so. And the number 10 is that of Tamsulosin, also known under the brand name Flomax, which is an alpha blocker that helps with the prostate and bladder control. And interestingly enough, this can cause the iris inside the eye to become kind of floppy and malleable, which can result in some higher risk of complications during eye surgeries, such as cataract surgery. And so if somebody is on this medication, it's really important for your eye doctor to know that so that we can discuss and prepare ahead of time for major eye surgeries, uh, just so that they're prepared and we can reduce the risk of complications. So a big moral of today's video, I think, is that if you're taking medications, even supplements of any kind, make sure to let your doctor know what you're taking. And a good tip for that is to just write out all of your medications and the dosages of what you take, and make sure to bring that in just so that our staff, technicians, nurses are able to get that into your profile so that your doctor knows what you're taking. Because a lot of times people uh, think, oh, I'm just here to get update glasses, my medications don't matter. No, they do, and they can affect the eyes. 
Now, I know we covered a lot today and I want to say thank you for sticking around toward the end. If you did learn something new, you found value in this video, please do me a favor and just hit that like button for me, but also share this video with any family, friends, someone you think that also uh, would potentially find this interesting. Otherwise, again, thank you so much for watching. Dr. Allen here from Dr. Eye Health. Keep an eye on it and we'll see you in the next video.